Let's see, what is it? <laughs> this is so typical me. It's 3.30 in the morning, and I'm out here in the shop tinkering. My buddy Bill, he calls me on the phone about, oh, I don't know, a month ago, right? Uh, judging by some of the paperwork he sent me, we first talked back about a month ago, uh, back on 3.11. Yeah, almost a month to the date. He says, man, I got this black cat. It's a Wasab unit. I can't find anybody that's willing to work on it. And I said, brother, let me tell you a story. And I'm going to tell you the same story I told Bill. I said, Bill, when I was a little boy, when I was like 15 or 16 years old, um, young man, there was this nice guy, uh, one of the nice people in town, his name was Kerry. Kerry went by the handle of Bouncer. Um, he had one of these units, the Wasabi Black Cat Watt Meter units. And I've been looking high in hell for this exact same unit that uh, not all tore to shit. It's in really good, sh really good condition like this thing. And I said, Bill, I know that meter pretty good inside and out. Why don't you send it on up to me? And I mean, Bill told me this, this story of how he had it at the local tech and the guy had it for two years and he couldn't figure out how to get it to work and couldn't do nothing with it. And Look, these things aren't that accurate. They're not. The freak counter is only a couple digits long. Uh, the oscilloscope, I like the uh, old periscope grid system they got going on here. It's cute. It shows basic waveform and the meters have always been incredibly generous. My friend Kerry, when I was a young man, let me sit in his little tiny house he had down in this little town called Garden City. And he let me start taking radios apart and learning how to work on them. Learning what did what and why things did what they did. And one of the units that I always got to play with was this workstation. And he coveted this thing like it was gold. I want to find one of these. It's in really good shape like this one. And uh, make it work, make it work well like I did with this one. And then wrap it up in plastic and put it on the shelf. Just to have for sentimental reasons. It's the same reason I got some of the stuff I've got. The same reason some of you guys have got some of the stuff you got. But uh, Bill sent me this thing. And uh, it took me all of exactly one hour and 20 minutes to fix this bill. Make everything on this thing work again. I would like to repair more of these. If you guys out there, you have one of these and you want to sell it for parts, I'd probably like to lay my hands on the tube, you know, the actual cathode tube that makes the oscilloscope work. Um, quite a few other little things to it, but I'd like to start having a couple parts laying around here, a couple of these for parts, because I'd like to start working on these. I enjoyed working on this little meter. Like I said, it's not the most accurate thing. We're going to judge it against birds there in the background. It's not horribly, horribly, horribly accurate like the birds in the background, but it's close enough to get you in the ballpark if you're going to be underneath two grand. Now, Bill, I don't know what problems your local guy had with this thing, but uh, I know what I found. And we're going to talk about what I found. It was old and dirty from age, right? Whew, big shocker. I took some contact cleaner before we even really got too carried away, and I cleaned out the SWR RF level button, the brightness, and the focus. Because the brightness was sitting here jumping all over the place doing this. So I cleaned out the brightness knob and the focus was doing this thing. It was shifting back and forth. Real slow though. Real slow. Anyhow, I cleaned all those knobs out, all that quit. So I went ahead and I cleaned all the contact points on the 20, the 200, and the 2000 SWR, the on, the black and the trap got that all working again my friend your Ford reflect switch is all cleaned up and is now actually working again and then it's got a little bit tricky now for all of you guys that aren't in the know this is your sensitivity okay for the decade freak counter and really all that is is a decade counter which counts up our cycles So I want to leave that on megahertz. 
this is how you align it on frequency. Now I got it laid down so it's close enough for the girls I go with. I'm telling you, it is what it is. Bill, I'm really glad your gun came up. Um, we brought it up slow after I checked the bridges, the high volt bridges. Now, guys, don't be sticking your fingers inside of this thing. If you don't know where to stick your fingers, just don't do it. There's 2,000 volts on the end of those caps right there. 2,000. There's 1,000 on that one and 2,000 present on the upper end of the bridge. Okay? The bleeder resistor for this circuit had burned up, and that's what that resistor is right there. Smoked it. All right. So I went ahead and I replaced it with uh, two 1 ohm or 1 meg resistors, bringing it down to 500. It pff, perfect. Not even getting hot. And as for the high voltage that drives the gun, that runs the cathode tube. Then we went on and we went, okay, we got all that work. I got the freak counter running first. And Bill, this took me about three or four minutes to figure out. I kind of struggled with it for a minute. But this screw, if this thing starts to wander back and forth on you, the frequency drifts a little bit, pop the lid off, make sure that screw and this screw are tight. Those are the return grounds for this thing. And if the ground is lifted, this thing floats all over the place. Just telling you. So then we went over here and we looked at our output tune. Now, as we go, this is a 20, the 200, and the 2000. Okay? The 20 is cracked. It took a few minutes to figure that out. But I went ahead and I was able to solder over the legs and use the stock part. It's cracked, so don't don't touch it with your screwdriver. Leave it alone. It'll be fine. The other thing is on the back side of the 200 watt scale, you've got this 140, 150 ohm resistor. And that's what the color band says. The actual resistance of the resistor. Yeah, it's at like a meg and a half. That's the reason the 2000 or the 200 watt scale wasn't reading. Read completely low. You could sit there and twist that knob till the cows come home. And it never read right. Now the 2000, listen, that 2000 watt scale, I don't care every Wusab meter I've ever seen, every black cat meter I've ever seen, has been the salesman's meter. What I mean by that is you breathe on the mic and it's going to go in the corner, okay? <laughs> Not yours. This is the electrolytic. This little 50 volt, 22 UF. That's what controls the peak motion of the meter, otherwise how fast it can move. Okay, well, the charging and the discharging of that cap. So it drives that. That cap, completely dry. So you'd sit there and go, ah, the order meter wouldn't even move. It's real sluggish. We overcome that. Now, we're going to test this with the Connex 44, 4400 turbo. We got our dead key set right at a watt and a half. Now, for real quiet, freak camera will stay steady. Hello, 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 adio. Okay, now, my friend Carrie. Um, was one of these creative individuals. I remember he uh, had a leak in his roof, and he fixed the leak, but the water got into the drywall and the insulation. So his solution to the sagging drywall and the ceiling was uh, he would take and he put drywall screw. He took drywall screws and big one-inch area washers and screwed the whole ceiling back up with it instead of taking down the drywall and replacing it. Creative. Anyhow, Bill, what he did is he took a little tiny drill bit and drilled a hole right here at the end of the 2000 watt. He took a little piece of blue plastic phenolic and stuck it in there. Because this needle, if you overdrive this thing, can stick in the corner, believe it or not. I'm just saying. Just saying. Oh yeah. Let's check this out. Let me turn my 5 watt slug the other direction. Rotate. Here you go. A watt and a half there, but a watt and a half here. All right, and that's linear. So five watts here is five watts there. 
we're going to go to the 200 watt scale. So now we're looking here. Right here. This scale. Right here. It's a 100 watt slug in PEP and 2X. Hello. Remember, not the most accurate thing in the cookie jar to measure temperature with, I'm telling you, but it works. 2000 watt scale. Hello. Audio. Okay. You're reading this scale right here, it's 200 watts. Hello. floats around quite a bit. Let's go ahead and check out our SWR function, which let's see if I can do this here. Move forward. Click that SWR for us, Bill. And it sets with one watt, by the way. Full. Oh, this is hard to do with one hand. I'll just move forward just air. Oh, just air more. There you go. One full watt gets you full deflection. Kilohertz function, which this should read to over. Overlight kicks on and protects the decade counter. Wait for it to clear. It's got to think for a second or two. There it goes. Bill, this is one of the prettiest ones I've seen yet. And I've been looking. I have a constant watch for one of these on eBay. But buddy, you're top shape. And from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you for letting me work on this thing, man. It's, it's truly been a pleasure. Of course, black, all that does is that kills the oscilloscope. Of course, trap, it uses a small, 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 tiny little um, 50 ohm resistor in there. Don't put more than 10 watts into it on trap. And you're back up and running. I don't know why your local tech had such a hard time with it. Like I said, it took me about an hour and a half, and most of that time was taking the, uh, the board off and repairing that potentiometer. Pull the whole board off. This resistor is actually on the back. Got to run it, man. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, man. It really is. This is a good way to start out the week for me. Bill, I appreciate you, sir. We'll see you. My name is BBI, and without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Now, I don't normally work on these things. I try to focus all my attention on the amplifiers. But when he told me what it was, because of where I came from as a kid, I couldn't help myself. Call me up. You never know. You never know what I might be willing to work on for you. I'll see you, gentlemen. Come find us, www.bbiamps.com. Come check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. God, I got them all. I'll see you, boys. Be good to each other. We're all in this game together. Bye.